Hello, and thank you for downloading Witness from the BBC World Service. And 96 years ago, an announcement in an American newspaper suggested that two of the greatest pioneers of electricity were about to share the Nobel Prize for Physics. But it never happened. Claire Bowes reports on why only one of them is widely remembered today. It's November 1915 and the front page of the New York Times reveals the names of two men who were to share the Nobel Prize for Physics, a Serb called Nikola Tesla and the great American inventor Thomas Edison, celebrated for his work with electricity and sound. We present the actual voice of Thomas Alva Edison. Ladies and gentlemen, when I look around at the resources of the electrical field today, I feel that I would be glad to begin again my work as an electrician and inventor. Edison was the Napoleon of invention. Edison had invented the light bulb, or at least he built the first really good light bulb, and he also invented the phonograph. So Edison was hugely famous, and he was a hero. One of the people who idolized him was Nikola Tesla. The Serb had moved to New York to work for Edison. Once there, he'd made a huge impact. Tesla had delighted in showing Edison his new, more effective way of producing electricity using alternating current, or AC, instead of Edison's system, which used direct current, or DC. Mark Seifer is Tesla's biographer. If you wanted to light a town with direct current, you would have to have a power station at every mile throughout the town and power would drop off over distance so if you were you know three quarters of a mile away you have dim light bulbs and if you were near the power station you have bright light bulbs there's something called a commutator which made the natural alternating current into direct current what tesla did was he removed the commutator and so he would be harnessing alternating current unencumbered and so now you could send energy literally hundreds of miles and you could also distribute electrical power so it's kind of like comparing a a horse and buggy to a jet plane. But Edison was not convinced, and the two very quickly fell out. Alternating current, by its nature, changes its direction of flow at many times a second. Say you had a waterfall which went downstream and then upstream and then downstream and upstream at many times a second. How could you put a water wheel on that? No one knew how to do that, so what they did was they just used the downstream. And that's the world that Edison had been working with for 20 years. So he didn't even want to look at the system. And so Tesla said, well, let me redesign your DC system. Instead, I can make that more efficient. And Edison said, well, there's $50,000 in it for you. And Tesla went ahead and redesigned the DC system. And when he tried to collect the 50000 Edison said, you've got to be kidding. It was an American joke. And so Tesla left in a huff. And that was about 1884. So that was their early relationship. And it ended on a sour note. Tesla was no longer in awe of Edison. Tesla looked upon Edison, as he once said, inventor of useful appliances. William Turbo is Nikola Tesla's closest living relative, his great nephew. In my household, we talk about Edison as a misplaced icon for electricity. When it was obvious to my family and to other technical people that uh, Tesla was much more important for electricity than was Edison. The hatred escalated when the two went head-to-head to compete for the right to build a hydroelectric power plant at Niagara Falls and potentially light up the whole of the northeastern corner of the U.S. If alternating current, or AC, won out, then Edison would have to completely overhaul his business. Playing on the fears of this new and mysterious power, Edison set about convincing the American public that alternating current was dangerous. So Edison started what was called the War of the Currents. What he did was he started to electrocute cats and dogs uh, and even a rogue elephant using Tesla's system. So Tesla began to experiment as to how to send electricity through your body, and he realized that he could send hundreds of thousands of volts but a very, very tiny amount of power. And with that, he could hold a light bulb in his hand, and he could light a light bulb. And he'd appear on stage, and he appeared as like a Sven Galley. And he was winning the PR campaign because people could now see that the Tesla AC system could be safe. He succeeded. He won the Niagara contract and changed the world. Before Tesla's system, you could only send energy about a mile, and if you want to have a factory, you needed to be right next to a power source. After Tesla's system, you could have one 
hydroelectric plant at Niagara Falls and you could literally light up the entire Northeast. You could send electrical power to Chicago, Toronto, Boston, to New York, all from this one system. This was a gigantic system all over the world they would now be starting to use the Tesla system. So I would say in 1897, Tesla became easily as famous as Tom Edison, and for the next few years, he was hugely famous. So, by 1915, it was no surprise that the names of these two men had been put forward as Nobel Prize winners. News spread quickly, but when Tesla's friend Robert Johnson wrote to congratulate him, it was clear that Tesla himself held Nobel in considerable contempt. This was his response. In a thousand years, there will be many thousand recipients of the Nobel Prize. But I have not less than four dozen of my creations identified with my name in technical literature. These are honors real and permanent, which are bestowed not by a few who are apt to err, but by the whole world, which seldom makes a mistake. The uh, newspaper reports in 1915 that they were going to have a Nobel Prize for Edison and Tesla together. In our family, we knew that that was not going to happen. It didn't appear to anybody in my family that uh, he would have accepted it. Tesla's family knew that Nikola was still stinging from a rebuke several years earlier when the award had gone to another of his rivals, Guglielmo Marconi, who Tesla was suing for stealing his ideas. He made a very big distinction between an inventor, he even saw Edison as an inventor, and Marconi as compared to a discoverer of new principles. So Tesla said, I've discovered new principles, and that's how to to uh, send wireless, complex wireless information through the airwaves, as opposed to a, an inventor who just builds a better mousetrap. So looking at the letters with, between Tesla and Johnson and seeing that, wow, he's already telling Johnson, I don't really want this Nobel Prize uh, because they're giving it to people that they shouldn't be giving it to. Ultimately, the, the 1915 Nobel Prize is given to someone entirely different does Nobel ever explain why? Yes. I mean, they said that they would never have not given an award to someone even if they wanted to refuse the award. But I don't think they can explain really why someone like Tom Edison never got a Nobel Prize or someone like Nikola Tesla never got a Nobel Prize. I think both of them certainly deserve the Nobel Prize. So it, it'll remain a mystery. I mean, we'll never really know. But if you put all the pieces together, there's a darn good chance that Tesla had written the Nobel Committee once they gave it to Marconi, that he was very upset with them for giving it literally to a patent pirate uh, for his invention. Nikola Tesla never managed to make money out of his discoveries the way his rivals Edison and Marconi had. In his later years, he became known more for his eccentricities than his pioneering work. Months before he died, he wrote this. One night, as I was lying in bed in the dark, solving problems as usual, my beloved pigeon flew through the window and stood on my desk. As I looked at her, I knew she wanted to tell me she was dying. When that pigeon died, something went out of my life. I knew that my life's work was finished. Nikola Tesla died alone in a hotel where he was lodging in 1943. Claire Bowes. For details of our complete range of downloads and our terms of use, go to bbcworldservice.com slash podcasts.